Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. So, if you ever been kind of making a weapon or something in Stormworks using velocity pivots or the new turret ring blocks, you probably run into the problem of your weapon like overshooting or overturning and velocity pivots just being a bit clunky in general. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be going in making a little microcontroller here that can make velocity pivots super accurate and precise. So, let's get started. There are three things we're going to need, that is two pivots and a seat. So I'm actually going to take this chance to test out the turret rings which were recently added. They're just basically velocity pivots with a hole in the middle and they're also sealed which is awesome if you want to have a boat or something. I'm also going to grab a regular large velocity pivot here and that way we can mount whatever we're trying to aim on right there. And for my seat, I'm just going to choose the regular compact pilot seat right here. You could use any seat that you like that's under the vehicle control tab. And uh, yeah. So for this, I'm just going to add a laser on. That is going to be what I'm aiming. We can see clearly where it is being aimed. Before we actually go into our microcontroller here, we're going to go on the seat with the select tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using A and D as my main left and right up down control axis so what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm increase the sensitivity on both to 100 so you'll see how this comes in later when we start building the microcontroller so I'm going to be making a microcontroller here what I'm going to do is set out a bunch of nodes and I'm just going to arrange them on my seat I'm going to have a single composite input this way in future if I want to add more features it can all just be going into one. You could, of course, just add two numbers inputs for your whatever axes you're using and just wire them straight up. But I'll also show you how to draw some composite values from the seat. And what we're going to be doing is taking the position of our turret ring and velocity pivot each. And we're also going to be giving them an output up and down, things like that. So in total, then we should have five nodes on our microcontroller. Alright, so we've got all our nodes laid out in the microcontrol here. Outputs on the right, inputs on the left. And down in the seat, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab two composite reads. I'm going to hold shift, that allows me to copy and paste them basically. And I'm going to wire them both up to the composite signal. WS is on channel 2, so I'll put that right there. And A and D is on channel 1. Left right arrow keys is on channel 3 and up down arrow keys is on channel 4 for numbers and so what we're going to be doing is taking these numbers and running them through four thresholds so I'm going to get two for each of these right there and connect those up accordingly we want them to activate when they're in certain bounds so we want one that's going to go up when we're giving it a positive value and go down when we're giving a negative value or turn on. In this case, I'll do the top one as positive. So we'll go from 0.01, a really small value that's not zero, and then just straight to one. That's gonna be the maximum. What putting our seat to 100% did is that if you don't have that, it's going to be a smooth gradient upwards. And with 100%, it's gonna be as soon as you hit the key, it's going to one. And then as soon as you take off the key, it's going back to zero. So it's a really sharp response. And that's something, one of the problems that you may have with a regular kind of setup. So on the negative direction, I'm simply going to repeat that, but put a minus value in front of that. And I'm just going to do that for the other one as well. So now we have a bunch of on-off signals relative to if we're pressing up down on either WS or AD. So what we can do now is run those through a couple up down counters. I'm going to get one for each and I'm simply going to connect the up threshold to up and down to down. And let's go into the select once again. And for the increment, I like to have a very precise weapon, say. So I'm going to give this a really small value like 0.0006. This is where you can really customize if you want a faster rotation if you want a slower rotation then you can increase or decrease this value to your liking if 
for your what I'm going to do is leave the clamp disabled right here and you'll see why once we start adding more things to this chain but for pitch what we can do here is actually firstly get our increment the same I'm going to enable the clamp and this is where we can set the maximum and minimum ranges for our pitch we don't want our pitch going in full 360 revolutions you may want that so you can do that as you wish but uh, for me I just want like, a simple elevation bounds so I'm just going to go like 0.5 uh, that's a negative to a positive 0.5 like that that means that our pivot will only go like halfway down 45 degrees and halfway up now that we have that we can go into what is probably the bulk of the work which is the PID so we'll get a couple of those and this time we're going to be going up here and I'm just going to get two of those in for pitching your respectively and for now what I'm going to do is to make this easier to see move it up there our up down counters are going to come out and they're going to go into the set point and if you've never used a PID before a PID will simply give an output based on uh, how far the process variable is away from our set point so in pitch for example our set point is going to be 0.5 as a maximum once we compare our pitch position here kind of got these modeled up we're going to put those into a process and if our pitch is less than that then it's going to output a value to increase it so what we can do is actually just line these up like that these are actually the wrong way around nice now we're going to get a constant on signal for our pids that's just going to make sure they're always working and in the select we're going to be inputting some values these can change if you want a more snappy response or something like that you can always change them to your liking but i'm just going to go with a thing that some values that i've found that are pretty good feel free to take these and use these in yours but uh, yeah, and we'll do that for both. Nice, and now we are done. We can actually test this. So we'll grab the microcontroller, place that down there, and just hook everything up. So composite to the seat. If you're wondering about seat composite data, then you have a large list and kind of overview on the actual description of the node. Other than that, we're gonna grab some number inputs and go to our pitch pivots right there and to our turret ring, which is our yaw pivot. And then we're gonna take any one of these two, it doesn't really matter, they're gonna be the same anyway. Current rotation in right there and the same for current rotation on our turret ring. Nice. For the sake of this, I'm gonna take the occupied on our seat and put that to the laser active just so we can see i'm in infinite electric right now but if you're not then be sure to grab a battery and just wire up all your electronics to the battery so now we're going to see if all of this is working jump in our seat right here laser comes on and what we can do is hit ws ad and there we go it's pretty accurate I'd say it's getting a nice rotation right there if you found your controls are inverted then what we can do is come in with our thresholds and simply swap them around so in my case they were both inverted so all I'll do is whatever was on up I'll put it to down and just kind of rearrange it like that and that should fix it if you think that it is still a bit slow and it overshoots a bit what we can do is just come in here and increase the proportional gain just a little bit and just kind of fine tune that to where you like it I might even go 9 on there and uh, yeah and with velocity pivots like this we can go a full 360 degrees and shoot lasers in our eyes so guys, hope you enjoyed that video. It's a very simple way of making velocity bullets a bit more controllable, especially with weapons DLC out. You want to be able to aim your guns nice and smoothly. And so with this method as well, I've found it's very customizable. 
Uh, what we can actually do in the future is maybe make an auto loading system where our gun will return to its normal position and with our current setup now that will be really easy to do and maybe you can, you can go off and even do it yourself after watching this so best of luck with that and I want to thank you guys for watching if you want to see any more tutorials comment section is your best friend for that but uh, yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you next time